So this lesson is all about what it means to multiply and divide when you have negative numbers involved. Um, now what this lesson does assume is that you are comfortable and confident in using long division and multi-digit multiplication. This isn't going to go through the process of multiplying or dividing. It's going to go through the idea of what it means to do so when you involve negative numbers. So the first thing we need to do is look at and remind ourselves what exactly is multiplication. Well, we had a few different ways of learning about it, and I'll draw a few of them here, and then we'll go through some of the uh, exact definitions for them. So one way of looking at multiplication was the first way that we started looking, which is 3 times 5. If we have the numbers 3 times 5, we would be looking at 5 reproduced 3 times. And then we add them together. So in this case, the 3 represents the number of times that the 5 is included. This idea is what we call repeated addition. And this is at the heart of what multiplication really is. On the other hand, we also looked at multiplication in terms of rows and columns. Three columns, each with five rows, or three rows each with five columns, however you want to represent it. And so we have a three times five, because we can add up how many x's we have. Three rows of five columns, 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15. So now we have multiplication as many copies of the same group. That's sort of what we see um, when we talk about three groups of something, in this case three groups of 5. We have the number of objects in an array, which is something that we're uh, used to seeing when we see rows and columns. Um, a quick note about copies of the same group, it works with fractions and decimals too, because if you have 3 times uh, four ninths, it's very easy to say, well, that means three copies of four ninths. And if we go a distance of four ninths three times, how far do we go? But where we really need to get to to understand what it means with negative numbers is with that concept that we talked about called repeated addition. That is something being added to itself many times. Uh, and so that's pretty easy to see with positive numbers because it's something we're very familiar with with positive numbers. In this case, we have three rows of five pineapples. Well, if each row represents a group, we have our first group of five, our second group of five, and our third group of five. In total, this represents one, two, three groups of five pineapples each. In the end, that's 15. Now I want to take a quick look at this because this is a positive number by a positive number and as we can see we have a tangible number of pineapples. That means we have a positive number. A positive number times a positive number is always positive. Now what if we take a positive number and multiply it by a negative number? And we treat this like repeated addition too. In this case we're going to use money because money is an easy way of looking at it and thinking about it. Suppose that for a total of four times each you're going to take away $50. So each of these ones represents a subtraction of $50. Well, the first time you subtract $50, the second time you subtract $50, the third time you subtract $50, and the fourth time you subtract $50. And we want to find out what in total does this repeated addition of taking away money represent. Well, in terms of our creating multiplication from repeated addition, that's 4 times a taking away of $50. And in total, if we add up negative 50 plus negative 50 plus negative 50 plus negative 50, you can double check my math here, it becomes negative $200. So if we think about a positive number times a negative number as taking away money a repeated number of times, well, no matter how many times we take something away, as long as we're doing it a positive number of times, we're still going to be taking away money. Therefore, a positive number of things taken away results in things taken away. A positive times a negative is always negative. So I'm going to uh, take a second and look back at our old friend, the facts family, or in this case, the facts triangle, a flashback from 
uh, second grade. It could be uh, even earlier in first grade. But at this point, you learn to talk about fact families in terms of negative, in terms of positive numbers. Three times five equals fifteen. In this case, we're making only a small adjustment, negative 5 and negative 15, and the fact family still holds. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. And because multiplication and division are related in this way in a fact family, we can see that the rules for dividing are the same as the rules for multiplying. Now, for positive numbers, we've known this for a while, but if we t look at a negative divided by a positive, a negative divided by a positive is equal to a negative. Negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. And this works because division, the inverse operation of multiplication, the rules are the same. Because they are what are called inverse operations, and they are related this way with fact families, we know that a positive times a positive or a positive divided by a positive has to be positive. Now I only included one way of looking at the positive and negative and that's positive times negative or positive divided by negative. But uh, shouldn't take too much convincing to, show, to say that the rules work both ways. Negative times positive is negative. We can see that with fact families and positive divided by negative, that is negative divided by positive has got to be negative and we showed that when we looked at negative 15 divided by negative 5. Or, excuse me, divided by 3 is equal to negative 5. Negative divided by a positive is equal to a negative. Now I'll take a quick look at something. What about negative 5 times negative 3? Well, we can look at this and we can talk about the multiplication, but I actually want to start with the division. Let's say we go back to our fact family that we had before. 3, negative 5, and negative 15. Now based on this fact family, I'm going to ask you to pause the video here for a second and see if you can come up with it on your own. What does the rule have to be for a negative divided by a negative? And you can see that on this fact family here. So go ahead and pause the video and see what you come up with. Well, if we looked at this the same way we did previously, 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Before, we said negative, five, negative 15 divided by 3 has to equal negative 5. Well, now we're going to look at the other way. Negative 15 divided by negative 5 has to equal 3 because these, this is the fact family. Negative 15 divided by negative 5 equals 3. Negative divided by negative equals positive. And you can see that this division always has to be true because our fact families for positives times negatives equal to negative show us this and no matter what triangle we look at. So if we look at a triangle that had negative 45, 5, and negative 9, we would see that negative 45, I'll just keep that as a negative 5 so you can see the example. And this is 9. 9 times negative 5 is negative 45. So that means negative 45 divided by negative 5 is equal to 9. Now to see with multiplication, I'm going to do some magic with factors here. So just take a look at this and see what I do. Now, we can't just multiply it straight away. But what we're going to do is I'm going to recognize that negative 5 is the same as negative 1 times a positive 5. And I hope it doesn't take you too doesn't take too much to convince you of that. Negative 1 times 5 is equal to negative 5, so therefore I can write this down because these two things here are exactly the same. Now I'm going to look at my other property of multiplication, which is that I can combine them in whatever order I want. So I'm first going to take the 5 times the negative 3. I'm going to multiply these two together and get a negative 15. Now I can do this because multiplication is associative which means I can multiply them in whatever order I want and combine them in whatever groups I want. A uh, combination of the commutative and associative properties. And so now we're at negative 1 times negative 15. And all we have to do here is recognize that negative 1 means the same as opposite. What is the opposite of negative 15? Simple. It's positive 15. 
So therefore, negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15. Now I've written this out here a little bit uh, clearer so you can take a look at it. Negative 5 times negative 3, here we are in the purple, taking a look at negative 5 split up as negative 1 times 5. 5 times negative 3 in the yellow, bit difficult to see, but it's still there, is negative 15, and the opposite of negative 15 is 15. Um, so all of our rules here, when put together like this, say a positive times a positive, or a positive divided by a positive is positive. Positives and negatives combined, and multiplic multiplication and division are negative, and negative times a negative, or a negative divided by a negative is positive. Well, this can seem a little bit difficult to understand, but when we put it all together, or seem like a lot of rules, we get two very simple rules. For multiplying and dividing integers, if they have the same sign, the product and quotient is positive. Positive times positive, positive divided by positive, negative times negative, negative divided by negative. And if they have different signs, over mine here, this is positive positive, or negative negative, if they have different signs, then their product or quotient is negative. That is a positive and a negative, or a negative and a positive. And all you do is you find the multiplication and division that would happen with positive numbers and you apply it with the sign rule. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to tell you straight off the bat that 15 times 12 is 180. And I want you to pause the video for a second and see if you can predict what sign each of these answers is going to be first before I give you some practice problems. So pause the video, knowing that 15 times 12 is 180, and tell me what the answer is to each of these different questions is going to be. Well, now that you're back, 15 times negative 12 in the northwest corner is going to be negative 180 because we have a positive times a negative. Similarly, a negative 15 times a positive 12 is also going to be a negative 180. On the right hand column, 15 times 12 is our familiar 180. We've done it before. And negative 15 times negative 12, because there are two negative numbers, is going to be a positive 180 also. Now, pause the video one last time and using the rules that we just multiply the two numbers together as we normally would and apply whatever sign rule we need to, find out what the answers are here for number one, number two, number three, and number four. Well, 12 times 7, just outright, is uh, 84. But because we have a positive times a negative, it must be a negative 84. For number 2, 17 times 2 is 34. We have two positive numbers. This is our familiar multiplication. It's a positive 34. For number 3, negative 11 times negative 11. Well, 11 times 11 is 121. Because we have two negative signs, they combine to become positive 121. And finally, negative 18 times negative 4. 4 times 18 should have gotten you 72. And again, negative negative combined to be positive. So one more time, when you multiply or divide with negative integers, what you're looking at is you're doing the same multiplication and division that you would were both integers positive. But then you just have to go back to your sign rules. If they have the same sign, the two factors, or the um, divisor and dividend, then your product or quotient is positive. If they have different signs, though, that is a positive and a negative, or a negative and a positive, your product or quotient is negative.